Um, I'm A.B. Trowan, um, and I am a graduating senior here at Brandeis uh, studying film. And I have been taking pictures since I was 15 years old. Um, that is through high school when I discovered a passion for photography, through what followed high school, which was three and a half years as a combat paramedic in the Israeli army. And after that, into Film Academy in Israel, finally at Brandeis, where um, through the Sorensen Fellowship at the Ethics Center, I went to film in Kenya for two months. And what I'm going to do now is work through a little bit of why I love photography and a little bit about why I realize that photography has a lot of power but equally some limitations. And I'll start with this quote which my photography teacher in high school taught me, which says, I would trade all the paintings of Jesus for one photograph. And what that quote says is that if you have a photo of something, then that means it's true. That means it's real. There's evidence for it. And that is something very valuable. However, over the process which I'm going to go over, um, that's something which I question sometimes. Oops, that's, that was wrong. OK. <laughs> Photo number one, this is Samuel Mburu. I took this photo just this last summer in Muthura Market in Nairobi. Samuel, a member of the street vendor union I was working with, stands hunched over in the squalor of the market, in the heap of garbage. Behind him, a poster, a billboard saying, upgrade to a detergent, great savings, posted by the Nairobi City Council. Samuel is part of an organization that is trying to get the attention of the Nairobi City Council and the Kenyan government to focus not on the development of malls and larger businesses like you see in the background, but on them, the small traders. Samuel was taking me through the market, as were the other street vendors, in an attempt that I would take photos like this one, like this one of Grace Wanjiro, also in Nairobi, who's a disabled street vendor selling padlocks on a carton box. Or of these women also in Nairobi, in the slum, all who are HIV positive and are widows who work together hawking goods on the streets. They wanted these kinds of images because they were aware, as I was, that if the images showed poverty in a certain kind of way, showed a certain story, then they would have the most effect both on the Kenyan government who was target number one, and target number two, who was people on this side of the world, who would see these kinds of images and donate and support their cause. But as a person standing beside Samuel Mbour with a camera in this heap of garbage in Muthurwa Market in Nairobi, there was something tricky about the situation. Because he, as he was aware, as was I, that in choosing to take these photos, it wasn't necessarily capturing an ultimate truth. It was making a decision. And it's that decision and that thought that I want to go back a minute and say where that started. Summer 2006, like all 18-year-olds, I had long hair at the time, I was passionate to be a photographer for the reason I just stated. Photography means truth. It's evidence. You can really capture something real. And I was about to, like all Israelis at 18, join the Israeli Defense Forces, which is one of the organizations which uh, is a target for film and photography and television and news, full of images which I'm sure many of you have seen. And into this reality, I decided I wanted to bring my camera, not because I had any agenda, but because I just wanted to capture my life as I saw it as an 18-year-old who loved photography, to capture something of my truth. And so I took pictures pretty much of everything, documenting those three and a half years of life from soldiers sleeping on the bus, waiting at the bus stations on the way to the base, to the soldiers, my friends, sleeping next to me in boot camp, <clears throat> to the tanks we were training on, to the random people at the base. <laughs> and ultimately, I was kind of um, the annoying kid at first who was there taking pictures. No, I'm just kidding. We, 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 no, 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 no. Uh, we, we, we all know that typecast, right? It started that way. However, I also documented my life and every aspect of it, moments when I was happy, intimate. I wanted to get the entire experience taken care of. But eventually, over time, 
everybody knew me, not as that annoying kid with the camera, but everybody wanted to be in on it. This is also the time when Facebook became, began being popular. So it reached a point where I would take out the camera and everybody would assemble to the point where you know, you could just get an entire tank of 30 soldiers wanting to be in on that image. And this is the part where I realized that it wasn't only my story I was documenting, but I was touching on a narrative that had to do with a bigger picture. This became particularly relevant in the winter 2008-2009, where depending on your politics and how you see it, doesn't matter. It was a terrible thing in general. It was Operation Cast Lead when uh, Israel entered the Gaza Strip due to rockets being fired out of Gaza into Israel. Before entering Operation Cast Lead, my battalion commander, who by this time he was a high-ranking officer, knew I loved photography, approached me and said to me, A.B., when you go into Gaza, I'm like, yes, sir. He said, you're going to take in your camera. And I said to him, why? And he said to me, you're going to take photos of tanks, and you're going to show the might of our boys. OK? You're going to show the strength of the army. And he wanted me to bring back those images. Now, I was doing it for myself, right? I was telling my own story. But I listened to him, and I took about in the 35 days we were in there, I took a few thousand pictures, which included photos of explosions, of tanks, just like he wanted, of demolished buildings, of my fellow soldiers who were with me in those 35 days cramped in a tank, and of just the way a city sort of disappears. And this is the last photo. This is us leaving Gaza. It actually looked that way that day. This is not Photoshop. After leaving, my battalion commander came to me and was extremely pleased. There were a lot of other things going on. And I, as I said, I was a paramedic. We also had medical stuff. This is only one part of the story, right? This is the photos. My commander came to me and wanted those photos to use them. And he was very intent on having someone from the IDF spokesman use those photos to represent our battalion story. Equally, many friends of mine at that time um, who were very involved in the Israeli left equally asked me for those photos because they wanted to put together some small exhibit in Jaffa solely using my pictures sort of to describe how horrible Operation Cast Lead was. And coming with these two forces who were very eager to use these pictures, I began being a little bit troubled because this was kind of my personal experience. And suddenly, my truth was beginning to be part of someone's story. And so I came home, and I started, that's my cat on my bed. This is 2009. started taking out all my pictures that I'd taken throughout my service and just placing them together with the photos from the army, with the photos from the family, with everything. And what I realized was that I couldn't give them the pictures to use, or I didn't want to. Because the moment, again, I would give them those pictures, it would lose touch with that inner truth that I had with them, and they would become full of an agenda serving a purpose, whether to promote my battalion commander to, from lieutenant to lieutenant colonel, or for my friends to come and say, this is what the Israeli army did. Let's act upon it immediately. And that's me <laughs> leaving Gaza, and there's my camera on the side. And that's seven years later, shooting a situation equally with the camera, someone else's story, and making a choice to remove many other elements of the story and focus on one so that that photo would serve as an agenda. And this photo will be used in about a month. Um, I'm going back to Kenya where we're trying to push for this organization's rights. And that photo will be up there. And I ask myself, while I'm fully for this organization and what they believe in, I wonder still to myself, is it the truth in every image? Or is it just that, an image, part of a bigger reality? That's it.